So this was a study that's been going on for a number of years now, and it's been looking at the results of a trial called UCAL-14 that's been run in the UK for adults over the age of 25 and under the age of 65. It recruited over 800 patients, and what we were able to do in this study is look at the genetics of patients with B-cell precursor ALL, which is the, the, the major uh, phenotype that you see in adult ALL, and try and look to see what prognostic impact, a range of chromosomal abnormalities, both ones that had been known at the start of the trial and ones that had been discovered since the start of the trial, and also secondary copy number alterations. So the, the headline results really are that uh, certain chromosomal abnormalities um, are associated with a high risk of treatment failure. Um, and these are um, ones that we knew about at the start of the trial, such as low hypodiploidy complex karyotype and patients with a 411 translocation. But we also identified um, two new ones, which were the JAKSTAT um, abnormalities, which uh, involve basically rearrangements of the CLRF2 gene um, and also the, the, the JAK2 gene. We also discovered that uh, patients with a ZNF384 rearrangement might actually be associated with a good response to chemotherapy, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, so on the basis of these results, we have revised our overall genetic classification of um, adult uh, B-cell precursor ALL to formulate uh, four groups, which can be taken forward and used in uh, new clinical trials. In terms of the secondary copy number alterations, these are deletion, essentially deletions of the well-known uh, genes involved in ALL, such as the Icarus gene, CDKN2AB, uh, PAX5, et cetera. Um, we, we studied a large cohort, the largest ever in the world, over 400 patients, and we found no association with outcome, with the presence of any of these deletions, whether we looked at individual deletions or um, uh, combinations of deletions. We looked in the whole cohort and within all kind of biologically relevant and clinically relevant subgroups, and so no association with outcome at all. Now, this result was quite surprising because it is in contrast to a lot of papers that have been published in adult ALL, which have shown um, associations with, with copy number alterations. We think this is for two reasons. Um, the, the main reason is because we have, th this study is the largest and most comprehensive to date, therefore we're getting the best picture. Um, it's easily over twice as big as any other previous um, study. And also our age profile is true adult ALL. Our lower age bound is 25 years old, which is quite high. And many other studies have much lower age bounds, um, sometimes as low as kind of 16, 17, 18. And the key thing is, is that the major copy number alterations that we and others have been looking at have actually emanated from pediatric discovery genomic studies. And so when we translate those uh, abnormalities and the prognostic impact that we see in pediatric ALL to adult ALL, we don't see a prognostic impact. And we think that the previous studies of adult ALL have shown an impact predominantly because they are including that cohort of patients aged between 18 and 25 that in the UK are now treated on the pediatric protocols rather than the adult protocols. And of course, because the age-specific uh, incidence of acute lymphoblastic leukemia decreases quite markedly between the teenagers year, teenage years and the mid-20s, you do see a, a large number of patients in that, uh, in that age range within these previous studies. So we think that that's what's driving the difference between our results and the results of previous studies. So going forward, we are now focusing a lot of our research on doing some discovery genomics purely within that adult ALL population of over the age of 25, so that we can find our own um, copy number alterations and mutations that may be prognostic rele prognostically relevant in that particular cohort. Um, and there is a study being presented at BSH as a poster where we have done um, SNP array analysis and also some whole genome sequencing and targeted sequencing in older adults over the age of 60 and identified um, some genes that appear to be specific to this 
um, older age category. So we're now taking that forward to look at the prognostic relevance of, of those genes.